Okay, so for this video, we're going to go ahead and focus on the vasculature that's related to the upper extremity. Um, again, the cadaver is facing upwards, right? It's in a supine position. Uh, I have the arm pretty much abducted, so we're able to get a better picture of a couple of the vasculature that's here. I'm going to go ahead and reflect pectoralis major as well as pectoralis minor. I'm going to go ahead and just reflect some of the superficial veins that you can see right here, right? I'm just going to move that out of the way so it's not obstructing our picture. Um, I'm going to take sternocleidomastoid, go ahead and reflect that. Um, if you remember from first part of the semester, we were all the way over here, right? So we're, remember, we're looking at the arterial system now, right? So I'm going to go ahead and focus in on this. You can ignore all these other ones. These are the nerves, which we'll identify in a, another video as well, associated with the brachial plexus. Um, but for now, you want to just focus in on these arteries here. Um, if you remember, this is going to be your subclavian artery. And then right here we have that landmark, which is your anterior scalene muscle. Um, if you went medial to that, right, which is where we kind of stopped in terms of in terms of vasculature. Um, this was your thyrocervical trunk, right? So we're essentially going to just pick up from after the anterior scalene. So the first the first branch points we want to identify is going to be essentially coming off of subclavian artery. Um, so if you want to look here, so I would highly suggest bringing this print out and then following along with the video. Um, time to time, I'm just going to go ahead and just point you out exactly where I'm pointing to on the cadaver. Um, so the first two that we're going to see is going to be right here. That's going to be your costal cervical and um, right here is going to be your anterior scalene, which we just identified, right? So that's going to be essentially a right lateral to that. And then the next one we're going to see is going to be your superior thoracic artery. Um, after that, I'm going to go ahead and show you uh, thoracochromial trunk. And thoracochromial trunk is going to be going to your major muscles, which is your pectoralis major and minor. And so we'll go ahead and first identify those three uh, on the cadaver. Okay, so remember we said costal cervical is going to be lateral to anterior scalene. So we go ahead and find anterior scalene. Um, we have subclavian artery right here. And then right lateral to that, if you guys are able to see it, right here, right? The edge of my probe, that's going to be your costal cervical artery, or costal cervical trunk, right? It's going to have different branch points, what we're not going to be concerned about. Um, the next one is going to be your superior thoracic artery, right? So superior thoracic is actually going to be seen a little bit better on this side. So superior thoracic, right? So just to identify, right? Costal cervical trunk, superior thoracic, right here at the edge, right? Superior thoracic is gonna essentially go underneath and supply blood to many of the regions here, right? So two of the branch points, costal cervical, superior thoracic. Okay, and the next one we mentioned was thoracochromial trunk, right? And thoracochromial trunk, what you want to know is um, that it essentially supplies pectoralis major and minor. So when we take pec major and minor, just go ahead and just focus in on this branch and notice how, and also this branch as well, right? Notice how these branches are going to these two muscle groups. Um, so right here is going to be your thoracochromial trunk. Um, a lot of the times you have a little bit of variation. Um, you have a lot, a little bit of variation that exists, and we can see that here, right? We can see one of the branches going from a little bit further out, uh, and that's going to pec minor, which is completely normal as well. So this is going to be your thoracochromial trunk, and that's going to these major muscle groups here, these two. Uh, for testing purposes, I would probably only ask you this one, um, even though like this, you should be able to tell that it's going to this. Uh, pec minor, so it would be thoracochromial trunk. So you wouldn't be wrong if you were to say that, but for testing purposes, I'd probably ask you about this branch instead of this one. Uh, the next thing you want to notice, right, so we identified thoracochromial trunk right here. Uh, the next one is going to be right underneath it. That's going to be your lateral thoracic artery. And lateral thoracic artery, the best way to find it is that it's going to be running superficial to your anterior scalene, um, your anterior serratus, serratus anterior muscle.
so the Rocco chromial trunk, right? And right here, we're gonna see this vessel, right? This is gonna be your uh, lateral thoracic artery. And remember, I said lateral thoracic is gonna be running superficial to serratus anterior, which is right here. And remember, serratus anterior had that little serrated shape, right? So that's one way to identify it right here. That's gonna be your lateral thoracic artery. And then the next branch point we wanna find is gonna be going down a little bit more distally. And you're gonna see these two arteries coming out, right? So you see posterior humeral circumflex, that's gonna essentially wrap on the posterior side of the humerus. Anterior humeral circumflex, which is gonna be on the anterior side, wrapping around. And then underneath it is gonna be a subscapular artery. Um, but before we continue on with that, I just wanna uh, mention a couple of the name changes that happens. Um, so remember we said from essentially anterior scalene on all the way to the thoracochromial trunk, we're gonna say this is gonna be your subclavian artery, right? And then if we follow the main branch going down, right, from right before the thoracochromial trunk, um, this is gonna get a name change and this is gonna be called axillary artery, right? And that's essentially gonna go Let's see if you can see it. Axillary artery, right? We follow it down and then we're able to see these two branches, right? So these are the humeral circumflexes that we're talking to, talking about. Um, right here. Right here, you're gonna see anterior humeral circumflex, right? So that branch is going right over the humerus this way. And then notice how location-wise, uh, posterior humeral circumflex is also kind of diving deeper in this way, right? So for practical purposes, I could show you these two branches and I, want, I could ask you, okay, give me this branch that essentially goes over this way. So that way you would know it's anterior humeral circumflex or I could ask you, give me this branch that's gonna go a little bit deeper in this way. So that'd be your posterior humeral circumflex, right? Um, the next thing you wanna be able to uh, find is there's a branch that's going immediately inferior to that so if you guys can see that right so if I pull it up oh, just keep your eye on that branch right here right so that's the branch right here right so those are the two anterior posterior humeral circumflex right here is the branch right here um, that's going to be your subscapular artery right and then subscapular artery is gonna branch into two things, which is A and then B right here, right? B, which is right here, notice how it's going to the posterior wall, right? And that's going towards the scapula. This is gonna be your um, scapular circumflex artery right here. And then on the other side, this branch, that's gonna be your thoracodorsal artery. And thoracodorsal is gonna essentially run deep to latissimus dorsi, which is seen right here. Right, so just to show that again, right? Um, that's gonna be right here, anterior and posterior humeral circumflex. I'm gonna go ahead and move these out of the way. And then right on the underside, we have this branch. Just ignore this nerve for the time being. That's gonna be your subscapular. Subscapular is gonna split into two. Uh, scapular circumflex, which is going to the posterior wall towards the scapula. And then you have thoracodorsal artery. That's going to, essentially going deep to latissimus dorsi, which is right there. Okay, so now we're gonna just go ahead and continue down, right? So we identified the branch points that are right here, right? Anterior, posterior, humeral circumflex, subscapular, we identified the two branches. Now we're gonna go down a little bit more distally, and right here we're gonna see a branch coming off, right? So again, right, those two branch points, we have this one coming out, and now we're gonna follow axillary artery right here, and then right when axillary artery branches right here, right, there's going to be a name change. Um, right here it's going to be essentially changing to brachial artery, right before this 
uh, branch point, and this branch point is called deep brachial, right here where I'm holding. It's deep brachial. Uh, one way to identify deep brachial is if you go ahead and just kind of reflect it, you're going to see this nerve that's running parallel to it, and that's going to be radial nerve, right? So deep brachial. And then brachial is going to continue essentially from this branch point all the way to the next branch point to the point where it turns into radial artery. So I'm just going to show you how that looks, right? So we identified the branch point, and now we're going to just follow it down. We'll just go ahead and just ignore some of these nerves, right? So it's right here still. Brachial coming across. right here still regular artery and then notice right when we get here right notice that split right so it splits into ulnar artery and radial artery the way we know well, the way we know this is radial artery is because it's coming in superficially and look it's coming all the way out thumb side right radial artery clinically this is essentially where you get that radial pulse that's going to be felt here. Um, so let's just go back to this branch point, right? So anything above this is going to be brachial artery. And then here we're going to have, depending on what we're following down, right, radial artery. And then going deeper this way is going to be ulnar artery. Um, if you notice, ulnar artery kind of disappears right behind pronator teres, right? So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm just going to go ahead and pronate a little bit just to relax the muscles there. The next thing that I want you to see, right, it's still ulnar right here. Notice how ulnar artery essentially branches into two points right here, right? Ulnar artery is going to continue this way, which is more medial. And then right here is going to be a common interosseous artery coming off the ulnar artery. And common, common interosseous artery is going to split into both anterior and posterior interosseous, which we're not going to be able to identify because they're a little bit deeper down. Um, but we will be able to follow ulnar artery, which is right here. Right Again, that's going to be on the medial side, right here. And we're going to be able to find it on the anterior forearm musculature as well. So to be able to find where ulnar artery is, what you want to do is find flexor carpi ulnaris, right, which is right here. That's originating from the medial epicondyle. And then notice how when I let that loose a little. There's a sheet that contains both the artery and nerve. And take a second to be able to tell, Are you? can you distinct, uh, distinguish which is the artery and the nerve? All right. Notice, notice the texture of this compared to the texture of this, right? So the one I'm holding up right now, that's going to be the artery, right? It's a little bit more tubular. And then you can see um, a lot of the tissue pattern right here, right, of the nerve. Um, so in this case, this is going to be also your ulnar nerve and then your ulnar artery. They're essentially going to run together underneath flexor carpi ulnaris, so you can identify that, that here. Um, so if you were to follow out uh, flexor carpi, oh sorry, uh, if we were to follow out ulnar artery, right, you're going to see now uh, this branch comes up all the way here, essentially goes up all to all the digits, supplying blood supply here. Um, the important thing to notice here is if you look at your drawing, right? Right here is going to be your ulnar artery, right? Ulnar artery is going to have this something called a superficial palmar arch. Basically what that is, it's going to connect to radial artery. So there's a superficial palmar arch, which we'll be able to see, and then there's also a deep palmar arch, which we're not able to see. So we're going to go ahead and just identify superficial palmar arch, essentially where radial and ulnar artery comes together. So again, right, this was ulnar artery, just following it out, and then notice right here, that's going to be that superficial palmar arch. And that's going to essentially connect to the radial artery, which is right here. So radial artery is going to 
dive a little bit deeper in here and then it's going to attach to these branches underneath okay so just know that this is superficial palmer arch right here and the other branch points that we've discussed so far